Yesterday, she celebrated both political success and her wedding anniversary. She has a simple message. Talk about Islamic uh, values or Islamic uh, uh, Sharia, for example. It's just to apply justice, apply freedom, apply uh, respecting human. It's not that we want to control people personal, their, their personal life. So it seems no ban on alcohol and definitely no dress code, at least for the moment. Egyptians are too pragmatic to want to chase away the money brought in by foreigners and tourists, and they enjoy a good life themselves. But many are nervous that things could be about to change. What they fear is a creeping imposition of Islamic values. But even that will be fought all the way by the many Egyptians who want to prevent the Arab Spring turning into an Islamic revolution. John Lyon, BBC News, Cairo. It's day one at Wimbledon, and the tennis tournament has already seen its first shot, with the five-time champion Venus Williams being knocked out in straight sets. Meanwhile, Britain's Heather Watson celebrated her first Wimbledon win. Our sports correspondent, Tim France, reports. Under an un-English sky, that's the sun you can see there, the gentle juggernaut of Wimbledon began its annual roll. The patter of a thousand shoes ambling towards the best seats. So who did the first eight punters fancy this year? I think, uh, what's your favorite? Roger Federer. Yeah. Uh, why? Because he's the, uh, simply the best. Federer and the rest. Oh, Djokovic, the guy who played medals. And it was Novak Djokovic, the defending champion, who had the honor of treading first on the precious lawn at center court. He needed barely to dent the blades of grass as he wafted aside Juan Carlos Pereiro in straight sets. Oh, it's beautiful. It's the first time experience in my career. The uh, grass was untouched. Uh, nobody played before on it, and it's just uh, it's a very special feeling. Not so smooth for Venus Williams, a five-time winner at Wimbledon. Her tournament lasted just an hour and a quarter, thanks to Elena Vesnina. Safe to say the tournament was not quite yet gripped by hysteria, but there would be time for the fires to be stoked with some of the more traditional South London fuel. And also with the first British success, Heather Watson securing her first win at Wimbledon. That was as far as British players went today. Other than Heather Watson, there was the usual clatter for an early exit. Tomorrow though, the murmurs of expectation will swell again around here as Andy Murray makes his entry onto centre court. Tim Franks, BBC News, Wimbledon. And that's it from me now on BBC One. It's time to join our news team to where you are. Good night. Good evening. The trial during the murder trial of Kieran Stapleton, who has admitted killing the Indian student Anush Bidbe last Christmas, heard that the killer smirked after pulling the trigger. Stapleton is standing trial after prosecutors refused to accept his plea of manslaughter. Peter Marshall reports. They've travelled thousands of miles to see justice carried out, and today Anuj Bidve's parents, Subhash and Yugini, were in court to hear claims that the man accused of murdering their son smiled after pulling the trigger. The 21-year-old defendant, Kieran Stapleton, arrived in court amid high security. He denies murder but pleads guilty to manslaughter. The court heard that shortly before the shooting, which happened in the early hours of Boxing Day last year, he'd been upset by claims his former girlfriend had been unfaithful to him. As he walked home with a friend, now a key prosecution witness, he crossed the road towards Anuj Bidve and his friends. They were heading into Manchester to queue for Boxing Day sales. The prosecution claims that Kieran Stapleton asked the group of students what the time was then he produced a gun, pointed it to the head of Anuj Bidve and fired the fatal shot. Anuj Bidve, who was 23 and studying microelectronics at Lancaster University, died despite attempts to save him. The jury heard that the day after the shooting, Kieran Stapleton booked himself a room at this hotel, just opposite the shooting scene. CCTV cameras captured him looking out the window at the crime scene. Prosecuting Brian Cummings QC said, if you deliberately discharge a loaded firearm into someone's head at close quarters, you must intend to cause really serious injury or death. This, he said, was not a matter of manslaughter, but a case of murder, pure and simple. The trial continues.
be Marshall BBC Northwest tonight, Manchester. A judge has described the treatment of two boys who were looked after and cared for almost 14 years as inhumane and degrading. The boys, who are now 14 and 16 years old, were moved around foster homes after being taken into care. They were abused in two of them. Lancashire County Council failed to find adoptive homes for the boys and they lost contact with their birth family. They're now suing the council for compensation. From a psychological perspective, it's so difficult to form um, secure and proper attachments um, when you do not have um, that any um, stability um, in your home life. Uh, and certainly for both boys, that will no doubt be troubling for them going forward into adulthood. A man's been jailed for nearly four years after killing two people by dangerous driving in Lancashire. 21-year-old Scott Sutcliffe was one of seven people in his five-seat car when crashed into a wall in Anchor's home a year ago. Two of his passengers died. And many people are still counting the cost of the weekend's heavy rain tonight. A month's rainfall fell in less than a day in many areas. Lancashire was among the worst hit areas, where more than 300 homes were flooded. Nazia Mogra reports from the village of Croston. As you see, the, the, the water just... Joe and Sharif moved to Croston just three months ago, and today they're cleaning up. And the only thing we can do is just uh, trust that we can get some money from somewhere and replace it all because... The cells and most of the people on this street are not insured for contents insurance. 70 homes were evacuated near the River Yarrow. Lancashire was badly hit. Lancashire Fire and Rescue Service alone received more than 400 calls in 12 hours. Wigan, Ramsbottom and Worley all badly affected. Today the Environment Agency were in Croston, keeping a close eye on water levels. But the big question, what can be done to stop this from happening again? We've just undertaken a study which will bring forward some options for how we can further protect the town from flooding. But it's also important that the community also participates and uh, plays its part to ensure that they can protect themselves if a flood does occur in the future. Planning to prevent these sort of incidents is very, very difficult and without huge infrastructure changes, uh, which would be the responsibility of the environment agency, I'd be very surprised if you could ever prevent something like this happening. Joe and Sharif will now try to rebuild their future in this home with the hope there's no repeat of Friday night's floods. Nazia Mogra, BBC North West Tonight, Croston. The chess grandmaster Gary Kasparov has been in Manchester today to mark the centenary of the birth of the mathematician Alan Turing. He took on the computer chess programme created by Turing in the 50s. The Russian won in just 16 moves but praised the programme which was written by Turing before computers were even invented. In a handwritten notebook from the 50s belonging to the renowned rambler Alfred Wainwright sold at auction today for £10,000. Wainwright's guides to the Lake District have become essential reading for many people walking in the area, but the sum paid was almost three times the guide price. And a young boy from Lancashire who lost both his legs after having meningitis as a baby has been given the chance to take his first steps. 11-month-old Louis Jenkins has been given a pair of prosthetic legs in time for his first birthday. A couple of bits of sports news for you tonight. Stockport tennis player Naomi Brody has been beaten in the first round for women's singles at Wimbledon this evening. The 22-year-old lost in straight sets to the Sp Spaniard Lourdes Domingo's Lino. She was always likely to face a tough challenge against a player 157 places higher in the world rankings. Brody eventually going down 4-6, 6-7. And in cricket, Lancashire beat Durham convincingly in the T20 Cup tonight. Pakistani paceman Yasir Arafat became the leading wicket-taker in the competition's history, reaching 99 in total, as the visitors were bowled out for 121. Stephen Croft then smashed an unbeaten 65 from 44 balls, as Lancashire won by eight wickets. And straight to the weather, here's Diane. Good evening to you. Well, the good news is there will be some warm weather over the next few days. The bad news is there will continue to be some wet weather. Not tonight. Tonight is a dry picture. There will be some good long breaks in the cloud cover. I'd say 50-50. Many places seeing some prolonged clear spells. So rurally, your temperatures could fall as low as 8 or 9 degrees. But I think in towns and cities, well, double figures, 10, 11, and it could be a 12, and maybe even a 13 here and there. But the clue as to what happens tomorrow is over my shoulder. We've got a band of rain which will be pushing toward us. It gets into the Isle of Man before it gets anywhere else. So the Isle of Man sees the damp weather first. Rest of the region, well, dry for the first few hours of daylight, but it doesn't take long for this band of rain to start to push its way in. For the most part, it should be light and it should be patchy, but it will be around for a huge portion of the day. So I'm afraid that is not a pretty picture, not even as good as today. Top 10
temperature anywhere above the 19 or 20 Celsius. More rain on the way then. Thanks very much indeed, Diane. Uh, Newsnight is starting over on BBC Two at the moment. Uh, Jeremy Paxman with a special programme asking if Europe is still a club that we want to be a part of. Well, we hope very much that you'll join our club. We're back from 6.30 tomorrow morning with bulletins during BBC Breakfast. And uh, don't forget, during the day as well. Thanks for watching this evening. Have a peaceful night. Some pretty steamy weather heading our way in the next few days. Some of us will notice the heat, but others will just get wet. In fact, already it's pretty damp across the far southwest of England. There will see some patchy rain extending across other southern counties, Wales, and uh, knocking on the door at Northern Ireland later on the night as well. Where the north and east, it'll be drier and under the clearest of the skies across the northeast of Scotland. Quite cool, actually, down to a single digit, but uh, very humid towards the southwest, with mist and low cloud becoming prevalent across this part of the world. So a bright start for Scotland, a uh, reasonable start today here and for Northern England too. But already, as I mentioned, some dampness for Northern Ireland pushing in across Wales and other southern counties. And some of this patchy rain will be pushing up into parts of the Midlands too. Bright start though for East Anglia. Down across the West Country, pretty drab and as I mentioned around exposed southwest facing coasts and hills. Some fog around too. And not much is going to change across this part of the world as uh, patchy rain continues to extend its way further north and east across the UK. It'll come and go, but eventually some potentially quite heavy bursts of rain, possibly across parts of northern England and up into southern and central parts of Scotland. Brightness hanging on across the far northeast, maybe east Anglia, and possibly in around Torbay, for example, might brighten up and turn potentially quite warm. Quite a humid feel across southern areas. So if you go into Wimbledon, there may be one or two interruptions, some light and patchy rain, but there'll be prolonged dry spells too, so not a washout by any means. So temperatures around 18 degrees with a light wind. Now the big picture shows fronts continue to trundle their way northwards as we head towards the middle of the week. They're going to stall across Scotland, which means a pretty wet picture here. To the south, though, we're going to draw in some pretty warm air across the Bay of Biscay. And potentially, if the sun comes out across the more central and southern areas on Wednesday, temperatures will shoot up into the mid to possibly high 20s, the warmest spell for several weeks. Alas, across Scotland, where we've got all those weather fronts, a lot of cloud and rain, it will again be disappointingly cool. And by Thursday, potentially some very heavy rain setting in across parts of Northern Ireland, uh, the southwest of Scotland as well. And we have severe weather warnings, early warnings in place from the Met Office here, one to watch. And we could see some thundery downpours further south as the heat builds for one more day. But that will get swept away as we end the week. So to sum up this week, some humidity, some heat, some downpours, and eventually something a lot cooler again by Friday. Keep up to date with the early warnings, etc. in your area. One of our Olympic hopefuls, Andy Turner, is among the guests on A Question of Sport, coming up next. What happened when a group of injured soldiers swapped the theatre of war for the West End stage? Men and women going through the darkest place, the happy place. A scared place. It's going to be amazing. Imagine Tuesday at 10.35 on BBC One and BBC One HD. Do you see the life I've lived? Or the life I've still to live? Or do you just see me as old? We are all living longer, but what will your life be like when you grow old? Well, I'm 65. The season starts Wednesday, 4th of July on BBC One and BBC One HD. In case you missed it on Friday, there's another chance to see the Graham Norton Show, complete with the bizarre but inspired pairing of Will I Am and Miriam Margulies, coming up after A Question of Sport.